Hi there, it's Rick here from The Game Creators, and uh, we're going to get into making a game. Amazing, eh? We're only a few tutorials in, and we're going to start creating something that's going to have a, a player ship moving left and right, it's going to fire bullets, and it's, an enemy's going to come down, and you've got to try and shoot it, and then you'll get a score. So, um, that's quite involved, uh, so I'm going to split it across about three or four different videos. Uh, and I'm going to show you some new things today that uh, will make things more organized for you because as you start to program games they can get quite big and you don't want just one big like document with all your program in it's best to sort of organize them into different areas and across different files so if we look at the screen we've got um, our main program here main.agc okay um, every app game kit um, basic program will have a main.agc. This is the first program that gets run. Um, I've also got loader and player move. In fact I've got more than those but I'm just showing you those today. And you can see our project here in the project uh, sidebar. If we open this up you can see all the different files to do with this project. Um, so we're focusing on main first. Um, the first command is set vir virtual resolution so we're going to set up a screen that is a portrait in size, six, uh, 768 across and 1024 down. And um, I'm setting some variables up, player X and player Y. And I'm setting them, them up as floating point uh, variables. Now, we've got a great online tutorial that just goes into the detail of different types of variables. Because previously, we've been in, the, in the earlier demos, we've been just working with whole numbers okay integers but with this game we need floating point we need more accuracy so you know 5.674 3.14 etc they're floating point numbers so we need player x and player y to be floats uh, i've i've uh, remmed out or commented out all the other things because I, we'll come to those as we build the game up but those two are important because player x and player y are the x and y position of the sprite that is my player ship that's going to be on the screen. Okay. Um, here's a new command called hash include and then a file name. What that does is it adds this file loader.agc into main.agc as a project. So the project now is main.agc plus loader.agc. Okay. So if we compile that, those two files will join together and we'll have a bigger source code. Let's have a look at what loader.agc does. We we'll click on this tab that shows us the file. Okay, we've got loader colon. That's a label. That's a position within the source file. So if we want to jump to that location, we would we would jump to loader, and we'll see that in a moment. Um, we're not interested in the laser at this stage, and we're not interested in the enemy ship. We're just going to load in the player ship .png. We we'll load it into image number one. Then we create sprite number one, okay, and use image number one. So the player ship will be created. Player X and Y uh, variables, which are floating point. Uh, X, we get the virtual width of the screen, and we divide it by two. That gives us the middle of the screen. And we minus the width of the sprite, which is number one, the player ship, and divide that by two. And that will give us the exact X position in the middle of the screen. Um, it's a good little formula. So we don't know exactly what that value is, but the AGK works it out and our player X position is bang in the middle. Player Y, okay, gets the height of the screen and it subtracts the height of the sprite. So it's going to position it right at the bottom, but um, the size of the sprite, less the size of the sprite. So it's not going to be off screen, it's going to be right at the bottom. Um, so go back to main.agc. You can see we included the loader file there, but here is when we go sub, okay, this is going to jump into loader. It jumps in at that point, and when it hits this return uh, command, it comes back into this part of the program and then goes into the do loop section. Let's just run that. Let's comment out the player movement. Run that bit of code, and there we go. We've got the player sheet down the bottom. It's bang in the middle, and it's above the bottom line. Okay. 
if we wanted to just play around with some of those values, if we say didn't minus it by that height, then it'll be off screen. Okay, run it again, and it's down below there. So we do need that, like so. If you play around those values, and you get to understand those better. Okay, so now we've got a player ship on the screen. Now let's move it. So we have another include called player move.agc. This is this file here. Okay, let's have a look at that. Again, we've got a label, player move, which we'll jump into. Uh, we're going to move the ship in the x direction, so left and right, using get direction x. So get direction uh, x will, if you're running it on a PC, it will check the keyboard for left and right movement on the uh, AD keys. And if you've got a joystick on your PC, it will detect those. If you're on a device like a, an iPad or an iPhone, and you're using the uh, accelerometer, it will report that back. So player X, which is a floating point number, will, will, will change. It will be itself plus the direction that's being reported back. And I'm times it by 12, so I can get a good speed on the ship moving left right. We can play around with that. We need to check that player X isn't right at the edge. So if zero, okay, if it's less than zero, it's gone off the edge. So we force it to zero. Okay, we can play around that and show that in a moment. And then we also check on the right hand side of the screen if player X um, is the width of the screen minus the width of the sprite, then if it's greater than that, this, this is greater than sign, if it's greater than the width of the screen, less than the width of the sprite, then it's slightly gone off the right hand side. So again, we force it to be the width of the screen minus the width of the sprite. Let me just run this, uh, let me just make sure we call it. So we include it, okay, player move to ADC, and in the main loop, we have to, okay, we keep checking what's happening. So let's run that. And here's a ship at the bottom. I'm going to use the keyboard. I can use arrow keys as well. And you can see, if I go right and left, it will stop at the edges. Okay. And it can't go up and down because we're not using the Y at all. So if we go back into the movement section, and if we just comment this out, okay, then run it again, the ship can go off. You see, it's not being stopped. And that's why we have that check at this location here. All right, so um, that's the first stage of the game. We've got a player ship loaded in. We can move it left and right. So I want to show you also that you can broadcast the game to your device. Now to do that, you press on the broadcast button here. But before you do that, you need the player app on your device. And we've created the player app. And it can be downloaded for free from the main app stores. Let's have a look. So on iOS, okay, this is the AGK2 player. You can download that. It's also on Amazon if you've got an Amazon device. And it's on Google Play. And you install that and run it. And you must make sure that it can see your Wi-Fi and receive messages from your PC. You know, your, your PC might say, do you want to allow this information to be sent when we click on Broadcast? So we'll click Broadcast, and the file is now being transferred to the device, and there you can see it's running, and as I tilt the device, you can see that the game's working. Wonderful. So that's broadcasting. Join me in the next tutorial where we'll add a player bullet and an enemy to shoot. And don't forget to subscribe.